Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year's to you all. Welcome to episode two of Option Theta Mining. We're gonna be talking today about the portfolio that I'm trying to set up that is to mine Theta on a consistent basis. That's gonna be the goal for the new year. You know, everyone has a goal in their portfolios for the new year. Mine is going to be keep a consistent above 30 Theta daily basis on this portfolio and keeping the collateralized um, obligations under 8K. That's gonna be the goal, trying to keep it as a small portfolio in order to then scale up in the future. And I'm gonna be sharing this experience with you guys and kind of giving you some of the things I found to work that you can replicate in your own trading strategy or portfolio or kind of mimic it as a whole. So make sure you guys hit the like button down below, throw a comment, not a lot of people commented on the last video. So I really wanna hear from you guys what you think of these episodes and it really will let us tailor it to what you guys wanna see in the future. So without further ado, let's review what happened during the week. As you can see here on the screen, portfolio profitability year to date uh, was around 1,063 before, and now it is 1,409. Now that is due to a $60 credit from a vertical spread from Microsoft that came out very nicely on Microsoft. Really didn't move much on it, but it was a nice profit. I do have another vertical on Microsoft that comes due in about 12 days i will be sharing with you guys and that's basically i'm playing a bullish spread on microsoft with an iron condor later down the road so i think you're going to get short-term bump but long-term more of that sideways not really large expansion that's how i set it up for myself i do take some directional plays in this portfolio it's not going to be all exclusively iron condors or directional neutral trade so keep that in mind but the goal is consistent 30 theta off the iron condors right now i'm seeing around 48 dollars for the week on a consistent basis and it's pretty amazing on this portfolio when the market moved up and down it the worst i saw was a nine dollar pnl loss on the day consistently staying above 60 pnl for each single day last week even though the market was kind of choppy as a whole added a new position of riot games so I'll explain to you guys what I basically been doing shortly. I'm just gonna go over the positions real quick. We added Riot uh, Games, Lockheed Martin, IWM, Intel, and a directional play for Apple during the week. So we're gonna quickly go over the why I went for Riot, why I went for Lockheed Martin. Well, simple as this, I set up every day and you guys can pretty much set this all up in 40 minutes a day. So it's 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at noon, and 15 minutes at close. That is pretty much all I spend on this portfolio. And I love the platform Tasty Trade. Link down in the description below. They offer a bonus for the initial deposits. And I do like their platform. I'm not sponsored by them. I've just been using their platform for many years. I like the functionality. I think it's a great option platform. Check it out in the description down below. And as always, basically we go to the watch list. So I created my watch list that I track. You can do this on your own and then select the IV rank and IV index change. And there's two things you wanna do. So rule number one, as on the screen, is implied volatility. So implied volatility is basically the expected move of the stock. So we do not wanna trade anything that is sub 30 IV rank. And the reason for that is partially due to the second thing you're seeing on the screen right here. Implied volatility is the market's forecast for a likely movement in a securities price. It is a metric used by investors to estimate future fluctuations, aka volatility of a security price based on a certain predicted factors. So if you have low volatility, that means the wings or basically your one standard deviation is going to be very narrow and you're very susceptible to what we call a gamma squeeze. Gamma squeeze, all it is, is a very large movement in the stock in one single direction, which can blow out your entire iron condor. And you don't want to do that. You want to avoid the wings as we call them or legs. Some people refer to them, which is the ends of the contracts, which is basically the two vertical spreads that you have. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make that as wide as humanly possible on entry. How do you do that? Well, you can do it one of two ways. So one of the ways is that you basically make the contract as wide as possible, but you don't collect a lot of premium. So I'm putting up literally a huge amount of risk and I'm basically getting nothing in return. So the reason I say above 30 IV rank is one, it limits the amount of holes you can dig yourself into 
exception of indexes. Indexes, we're gonna have to put a caveat there because S&P and NASDAQ seldom rarely now in this low IV environment go up that high. So there's two things I use. I use IV rank, which is right here, which I filter by IV rank. And basically I'll go down to 25, but I'm saying sub 30 just because once you get down to that 30 to 25 region, it becomes a little murky. Then you got a layer on technicals and under to understand is this in an area that this IV is not going to continue to go up. So as you can see here, Netflix is 42.8 with a 9.7% increase on the IV over the five days. This is where you really need to get a notebook, guys. And I have a written down of what IV rank I entered at and the five index change when I enter that trade. That allows me to track it basically of what is happening to that IV. The IV came increasing a bit because I entered at a 40, so it went up by uh, two points. However, the index five day change has gone down. So we're kind of on the lateral curve falling down on that IV. And that's basically where I want to pad the number. For example, Intel was sitting around 60, it's still sitting around 60. However, the change over the course of five days is drastically going down. This went from 11 to six. So we're staying around the same percentage on the ranking. However, implied volatility is shrinking. Even though Intel didn't really move much from my entry point, I'm still making $16 on this trade, on this iron condor. If we break it down for you right here, it's a January 19th trade. And yes, I'm in the expected move to the downside because we moved to the downside, but I was staging this trade basically saying, hey, I think we can still squeeze higher until I'm gonna skew it slightly to the upside protection versus downside protection. And that's one of the things you guys are gonna have to encounter is you're gonna have to look at a chart and basically say, hey, is this stock more likely to continue going up or continue going down or just go sideways? And the expected move on Tasty Trade is an excellent resource for understanding the basic expected move based on the current volatility. So it kind of layers on. You look at the chart, you look at what the trend is, you look at what the expected move is, you've layer on the volatility, and all these things will come with time. Naturally, the expected move is a great resource. It tells you kind of, okay, based on not a lot of experience, this is what the expected move based on the option pricing. And the option pricing is thousands of people basically showing their opinion or basically sending the signal to the market of the scarcity or the likelihood of something happening. So it's not just your opinion, that implied volatility move or basically that expected move is priced in through the options market. So looking at that, you can kind of decide, okay, which side do I want to air at? And also you're going to have trades like, for example, Lockheed Martin. I basically, when I opened this trade, it was a dead flat in the center uh, condor, whereas now the IV has expanded. However, I'm inside that expected move. However, if you look at it, I'm still making $11. So there's a risk to reward there. I'm playing it because I don't expect it to have a large move and kind of just go sideways into earnings. And I'm going to manage it similar to how Tasty Trade talks about at 21 days to expiration. So I have another roughly month, so another 20 days, which will bring this around to the 22, 23 day expiration, which then I can basically say I'm going to close out of this trade or not, depending on the movement of the stock. So this is what I'm experimenting with, taking an iron condor through an earnings uh, event. That's the only trade I'm taking through an earnings event, and I'll let you guys know how that all goes. Now, when we set up these principles, which is rule number two, essentially, is that we need to keep our leg lengths or the spread between the two strikes more than $5. I know that's pretty hard on some smaller stocks, so you can basically use Delta as well as a representation. You want a minimum of at least 10 delta because it has historically shown if you guys see the tasty trade um, episode where they talk about it they use historical data to base their assumptions they talk about 21 days to manage they talk about the wing length that they're an amazing resource so i'm basically following the rules that they're sending for because these people are using data from massive amount of options they have access to it so they're basically putting it out there you're more likely to have a winning trade if your strikes are wider and we can actually show that. That's pretty simple to show. So we're gonna go to the watch list. We're gonna pick something I'm not uh, really buying into. So let's say TLT. 
TLT, or let's do AMD. AMD is everyone's favorite stock, right? Fatal's favorite stock, everyone. Throw it down in the comment section below so he can be mad at me for that. So if we look at it, let's say we go to February 9th. I'm just using an arbitrary number, and we go to one standard deviation, and we put the strike at $2.50. That's what we're gonna have the strike at, and actually we can't do it so well on the bottom. There's a $5 at the bottom. So it's gonna be a perfect example of our max loss to max um, ratio, and we're gonna actually go to the curve. Now I wanna show you guys something. So if we look here, our break even point is about a dollar under the when the strike is two dollars and fifty cents so that's about the middle of the strike that's where you're taking your maximized uh, loss essentially or where your losses start to compound as you can see here as you get closer then it, it goes exponential versus the other side if we look here that we have nearly a dollar fifty that of delta so we're, we haven't moved it too much but it allows us to manage the trade. And also if it were to come here, then we can set up an iron butterfly, which is basically selling a put and buying, uh, sorry, selling another call and buying another call in order to set it up as a butterfly to basically try to get the stock to basically land right at the middle of that strike to minimize our maximum loss. But basically what I'm saying is you wanna widen these things because it doesn't allow you to basically do anything once it comes. I know that you're gonna have more collateral. However, what I found is, and looking at it, my better positions are the ones that have those wider uh, strikes. It allows me to manage them better. It manages to basically not fluctuate as much. You're gonna have a, more PL fluctuations day to day. However, how the trade is setting up, where the deltas are moving, will not fluctuate as much versus the, the shorter strikes right here. The, the $5 is gonna add up better. Right here, that's about a five delta right here versus you're looking at a three delta. So really, you would honestly want this to be like almost a uh, significantly larger, looking at like eight or 10, we were saying before. So that'd be a approximately $12 wide here and then $15 wide here, our theta improves to $5 before, and negative skewed delta. Yes, our max loss is higher, but then you can shift up the iron condor, basically how you see the best way to do it, where we can get a positive delta, kind of limit that risk to reward. But that $12 wide is gonna be significantly better to manage because we can then set up when we get up here is to buy the um, 180 strike again, and then short the 195 to basically set up an iron butterfly to then allow us to recuperate some money if it completely blows out our stop. So that's gonna be an important thing as well to keep in the mind in the future, the wider the strikes you set up, the better it's gonna be for managing those bad scenarios. The PL will drive you a little bit crazy. However, we're not really focusing on the day-to-day PL. We're looking at how the stocks are moving as implied volatility moves up. Index funds during earnings time are probably gonna be your best bet because they don't suffer that implied volatility moves that the individual stocks do. However, we have to also look, basically make our trades based off IV rank, what is it doing, when is earnings coming up? That's why I always have, I've added earnings so I can see when earnings are coming up. Like for example, January 30th for AMD. I'm not playing AMD going into earnings. As you can see, Netflix, January 23rd. I'm playing some earnings calls just to see how this plays out. I've limited the size of those positions in order to basically experiment with them to provide the data for you guys to kind of learn from what I'm experiencing and share with you. And last but not least, the final rule. Let your trade work. I have seen trades on this portfolio that basically fluctuate negative, then go right back to positive. Let them work. Let theta eat away the position. That is why you really wanna go out at least 40, 50 days. That allows you to then collect 30 days of theta. It doesn't, it prevents you from getting very wide swings in the market, especially because if on entry, you're managing your risk. You're setting up those wings. You're setting up, if we go on SPY, for example. If we go to April, basically, if you set something up like this, even let's say a $10 wide strike right here, you're looking at, I'm pretty far away from the expected move. I got 110 days of collecting theta at $1.40 every single day. 
slightly negative skewed data just because we expect the market to move down and have a pullback so we're protecting ourselves total 167 dollars of max profit versus 183 dollars but a consistent dollar 50 every single day you basically you want to use the indexes as your piggy bank to set up these theta contracts but you want to basically set it up when implied volatility moves up on them not necessarily when it's moving down or crushing so right now i'm kind of keeping my hands away from the keys and letting the portfolio just do it i manage the trades every single day by just looking what the expected move is based on my expiration day for example if we go to tesla i've been keeping an eye on this one because i'm at the 230 which is inside the expected move just on the edge but i'm not too concerned about the upper move because tesla just had a recent sell-off pushing back up it'll kind of play this ping pong game so i'm not truly worried about that and i just go every single day through these trades just make sure okay not an expected move not an expected move next and you do this every single day at four o'clock. It's a simple thing, 45 minutes, and you can replicate this as well. The key is you're not going to get a crap ton of money from this portfolio instantly. It's a long-term reward process similar to investing, but it's more consistent because it's you're stacking the deck against your component with option volatility, data, and directional neutrality. So with that, guys, I thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe down below. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. And let me know how I can improve this episode and this journey for you guys. I really want to share this with you, and I really want to make it better for you. So thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year's to you all, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.